Okay, so at this point we're, in the course, we're going to talk about something which you, you all use all the time, but you might not understand how it works. And so we're going to talk about display technology. Hey, the photo we have here today, this is a transparent display. Um, so they've actually placed these objects behind the panel, and then they can superimpose images. You'll learn today, though, that this is just done with a conventional LCD, and that the backlights they have behind this thing are extremely bright because they're just taking the standard LCD TV, which is not that transmissive, and putting a ton of light behind it to light up the objects behind it. Okay, so let's get started. So most of today's topics are covered, we've covered previously. We've already gone through a lot of the basic principles we'll need for this, so it should be fairly easy and straightforward for you. So I'll skim past some of the fundamentals since we covered them before. We're going to cover transmissive displays, focusing on LCDs, their basic optic operating principles. We'll talk about active matrix drive. I'll talk a little bit about emissive displays such as OLED and active matrix drive for them. And we'll talk a little bit about reflective displays as well, including one that uses interference. Okay, so remember, we're going to have to go back to polarized light when we talk about liquid crystal display. So here's unpolarized light for the E-field, all different directions. And then here's linear polarized light. So if this is the moving, um, sure this is an error here, this should be moving along the z-axis. I think I fixed it on a previous slide, but not this. That's a z-axis. So this would be y and x here. Here's y and x, linear polarized in this direction, or it could be linear polarized in this direction, where it's 90 degree rotated. And remember, we can also think of linear polarized as a resultant of two of these. So these two are the same as this. This is the same as this. Nothing. These two are the same as this this is the same as this, so it's the same thing as polarization in this direction, E-field oscillating this way. And we did this case where we said, okay, consider two or more photons, but look at two photons that are orthogonal in their polarization, and then have them be a phase delay of 90 degrees between the two of them. And when we looked and tracked the you know, the magnitudes and the polarity of the E-field for these versus angle, we noticed that here they are, resultant this way, this way, resultant this way, this way. And if you map the resultant as it spins, you would see that the resulting polarization is circular and rotating with either position or with time as the wave propagates. So this is what we call circularly polarized light. And that was shown... Furthermore, how we could basically create circular polarized light from polarized light, unpolarized, polarizer, polarized light. You put in a quarter wave plate, that turns it into circularly polarized because a quarter wave plate takes one of these and has a higher refractive index for that axis of the material versus the other axis and delays it by 90 degrees such that you go from linear polarized to circularly polarized. So the key thing is this is a birefringent material. That's going to come up for liquid crystal displays, meaning that it has two different refractive indices for two different axes. So if you see one axis, you'll see one refractive index. If you see another axis, you'll see a refractive index that's higher or lower. And so we need it to be thick enough and enough refractive index change such that a portion of the, of, or one of the portions of the resulting polarization here gets delayed by 90 degrees, then it becomes circular. So now it's circular. And then we further showed if you go through another quarter wave plate, it shifts it not by 90 degrees, but by another 90 degrees. So if we have a quarter and another quarter, that's a half wave plate, shift it by a full half wave or 180 degrees, and you look at the resultants, you're back in linear polarization, but it's been rotated 90 degrees compared to the original one. So here we're like this, now we're 90 degrees, and if we have a polarizer like this at the end, we can get the light through. And so if we didn't have these, you'd get no light through, and if we put them in, you do get light through the system. So the key question is, is what if we could make an electrically switchable half wave plate here? Okay, if we could electrically switch these between a half wave plate and no wave plate at all, well you could make a light valve that would either transmit light or block light. That's how a liquid crystal display works. So let's take a look, a look inside at the, the most common type of liquid crystal display, twisted pneumatic. And this is the diagram of a simple diagram of pneumatic liquid crystal. Okay, so it's a liquid with all these long molecules, rod-like molecules for the liquid crystals themselves. It is a liquid, so these can move around and flow. 
It's called a crystal because there's an order here, because they all line up. There is somewhat of an order, so it's not amorphous. It does have a periodic nature, hence it's a crystal. And it's birefringent because these things are all lining up. And what we talked about last time is if E field aligns, if your E field and polarization is aligned with the long axis of the molecules, you'll see a higher refractive index versus if the E field was this way, you'll see a lower refractive index, okay? when it tries to go across the particles. So let's take a look at this. And so what you do is you take this liquid crystal and you put it between two plates. These plates are special though. What you do is you start with a plate that's been coated with polyimide. It's a polymer. And then all you do is you take a cloth, literally, and you rub the cloth multiple times across there. And the cloth will basically create these grooves or scratches inside the polyimide. You can see this is really small. This is micrometers here, okay? Why we do this is when you put the liquid crystal on there, the liquid crystal molecules themselves will line up with these grooves. Okay, so they line up with that because of their interaction forces. And so when I put the liquid crystal against this plate, you see they all line up. But then on the other side of this, I have a plate which was rubbed in this direction, so they line up that way. And so if they're lined up this way on this plate, and this way on this plate, in between they rotate. So it goes from lined up vertical, rotates, 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 rotates. So you actually get a rotation of the orientation of these that's created by these two plates which are rubbed in opposite directions. Now, what's going to happen is then we put a voltage on these plates as well because they have electrodes, and you'll see that the molecules line up with the E-field. Okay, right at the plates they stay the same because it's a strong force, but the E field's enough that the liquid crystal molecules in between line up with the electric field. And so that will give us a switchable effect between no wave plate and a quarter wave plate. Let's take a look at that in, in greater detail then. So, in this case I've got no voltage applied and the liquid crystal follows this sort of this arrangement created by the plates. And if I have a photon of light with polarization in here, what happens? This is acting like a half-wave plate, so this is acting like a half-wave plate, okay? And the light here lines up and it starts to rotate. And it keeps rotating and lining up because of the birefringence as it goes through. And by the time it comes out the other side, as you can see here, it's polarized this way, whereas it came in like this. So it rotates the polarization by 90 degrees. Remember, we said that the refractive index maximum is seen when I have some sort of molecule and the E-field is aligned with it. Well, look at this. The E-field and polarization always automatically lines up as it goes through here with the maximum refractive index axes. And so this thing is a very effective way to basically take the polarization and rotate it by 180 degrees by making this act as a half-wave plate. And so as a result, I can get through the second polarizer here, which is crossed with the first polarizer. So in this case, I get transmission. Of course, you only get half the light through, right? That's one of the problems with LCDs is that the first polarizer, you lose half of the light, right? So if you lose half of the light here, then at the end, you at most, you get half of the light out, out the end no matter what you do in here. Now, if we apply a voltage, we said that we basically see the liquid crystal orient along with the electric field. And so in that case, my molecules are lined up like this, okay? And if I have a photon coming in, the polarization is either in this direction or it's in this direction as it's moving into here. But none of these are moving aligned with the optical axis. That would be like this. But I'm always going across the molecule. And so it doesn't see any birefringence here. It sees basically at this polarization you're going across the molecule. This polarization you're going across the molecule. And so as a result, you have no birefringence because you don't see anything different based on which, at, which polarization you have. So the polarization goes through without any disturbance, and because that's a cross polarizer with the polarizer here, you get a dark state. And so there's no light transmission then. Again, this is a nice diagram that shows how the birefringence is always maximally aligned. You get a maximum effect in this case. So you can see here's the liquid crystal molecules rotating with no voltage. And so this way, the polariz polarization of the light keeps seeing the maximum birefringence and it keeps experiencing the same 180 degree phase delay that get, turns it 
from this polarization to this and you get through the other polarizer. You apply electric field, the molecules all line up. And regardless if the polarization was this way or this way, you're always going across the, the, the rods of liquid crystal and they don't see any birefringence and you get the, the state where there is no transmission. Okay, I think they call it on state because of voltage, but there's no transmission and it looks black. Here's a question for you. If I want to make this a reflective device, like you see here, and that's what you have in LCD wristwatches and calculators, how would you change the thickness of the liquid crystal and how many polarizers would you need? Well, you can see you only need one polarizer because it goes in here through the liquid crystal, reflects off the mirror, and you can use the same polarizer. And the liquid crystal in this case only needs to be a quarter wavelength thick because you go through it twice. So there would be quarter wavelength plus another quarter wavelength gives you half wavelength so it doesn't have to be as thick. So that's how you make a reflective LCD pixel and these were transmissive LCD pixels but the same principles apply. So to make a full color LCD display like you have on your smartphone or laptop or your TV at home, what you do is you add color filters. And so what you do is you basically have Here's your polarizer, liquid crystal, here's your other polarizer, then you just put a color filter up front. And so if you look at this as a zoom in of a mouse arrow on a white background, so this would actually appear white because red, green, and blue, when you mix them together, that creates white light. And if I wanted to create blue light, well, I would just turn off, if I wanted to make this mouse cursor look blue, I would simply, let me see if I can actually even do this here, I would turn off all the green and the... Uh, if I wanted to make it look red, let's say I wanted to make it look red. Well, then I would, I'm doing a, yeah, there we go, it's working okay. I turn off the green and the blue pixels, okay? And so if this was a portion here, okay, I would see as a result that this would look dominantly red because I turned the blue and the green pixels off. And if you want to create colors like yellow, you do green and yellow together, green and red together, and you can make mixed colors as well. One of the challenges you have when you do this is that this is only 40% efficient for a typical polarizer, and a color filter only lets a third of the visible spectrum through, right? So then I end up with 0 0.4 times 0 0.3, which equals, at best, only 12% efficiency for getting the light from the backlight of the LCD to the viewer. And so LCDs waste more, waste typically, actually even, they're less efficient than that. They typically waste more than 90% of the light coming from the backlight. So if you didn't have all these optical losses, your LCD display could look 10 times brighter, an order of magnitude than it does now. To get a further explanation of all this stuff, there's some good video links too on Blackboard. So check out these. They're posted on Blackboard, and they go to YouTube, and there's some quick videos that show you all this stuff with some animations and, and other things as well. Okay, so... Take a break, do some review, and then we'll continue from there.